Let's break down why the jelly roll is so challenging to inject when it's just about a unit of tox. We're going to break down what the jelly roll is, what happened to my patient, and why it's so challenging sometimes to treat. So let me share with you guys my beautiful patient. She came in to me, these are her before photos. She came in to me for full face tox treatment, just like she always does. But this time, for the first time, she wanted to treat her jelly roll. And we did. We added one to two units in her jelly roll and boom, fast forward a week later and this is what she sends me. She slides into my DMs with this video saying, oh my God, what happened? It doesn't look good, right? When she expresses or activates that obicularis oculi muscle, it looks, her under eyes look thick, they look swollen, they look puffy. This isn't what we intended for her. But what happened? Let's take a step back and talk about what is the jelly roll to begin with. The jelly roll is actually, it's not skin that we're actually concerned about. It's actually the muscle that's causing this jelly roll. So the jelly roll is a little area of thickening underneath the lash line on your lower lid. And the musculature of this area is composed of the obicularis oculi muscle. And the obicularis oculi muscle is divided into three sections. We have the outermost section, which is the orbital section. Middle is the preceptal, and the innermost section closest to the upper and lower lash line is that pretarsal obicularis oculi. This is the muscle that is creating the jelly roll. So it's not skin, it's not fat, it's actually the muscle kind of bunching up right underneath that lash line. Some patients are bothered by it, some aren't. And it really is just kind of genetic. It's nothing that you're doing that's causing it. It's just something that some patients experience. Now, it's not a sign of aging. My daughter, in fact, has a little bit of a jelly roll and she's four years old. So it's just how your under eye lays. But what we're targeting when treating the jelly roll is really that pretarsal tarsal orbicularis oculi muscle that is bunching up and kind of creating a thickening of skin underneath that lash line. So how do we treat this? We use Botox or any of our neurotoxins, Juvo, Dysport, Xeomin, Daxavilatibo, any of your preferred choice of neurotoxin, and we are targeting this pretarsal muscle. Now, when it comes to dosage, it's really, really important to dose this properly. Now, just like dosing the frontalis, it's almost like a guessing game, right? We are treating our patients as injectors. We treat our patients based on our experience and what we think that their anatomy can tolerate. The pretarsal orbicularis oculi muscle is such a small muscle that you really need to avoid overloading this muscle. And that's what causes the complications that we'll discuss later on in this video. So when it comes to treating this muscle, we are using a really tight reconstitution. If you're performing or utilizing a 2.5 reconstitution for your normal neurotoxin treatments, this one might be one that you want to really tighten up. Maybe a one-to-one -one, um, or 1.5 reconstitution, which is my preferred but you are using about 0.5 to one unit per side max until the patient proves that they can tolerate that dose. So what you need to do is it's almost an intradermal injection because what you're really targeting are those superficial fibers of the obicularis oculi pretarsal portion, those superficial fibers that insert into the dermis. And you want to relax those superficial fibers. You don't want to knock out the entire pretarsal muscle because oftentimes that's what ends up causing these complications that we'll talk about. You want just softening of those superficial fibers from the pretarsal to the dermis that allow that skin and muscle connection to kind of relax. And if you dose this properly, it's a beautiful result. It looks smooth. It looks clean. If you overdose this, it can go incredibly wrong. Now, it's temporary wrong, but... It sucks for our patient. It sucks for us as the provider that we did that, right? So I always, when dosing the jelly roll, I always start with a half unit or one unit. And I always tell the patient, we're gonna start really low. And if your under eye proves that they can tolerate this dose, then we'll go up from there. But I've done, when I first started injecting jelly rolls, I started with two to three units per side, and it was a nightmare. I didn't realize how sensitive this pretarsal muscle is. It really is a very small, fine, thin muscle. So a unit can oftentimes even be too much. So my recommendation is half unit to a unit max, 
once they tolerate that dose, then you could always go up from there, but start safe and start conservative. So let's talk about what can go wrong with this. The reality is, is that the pretarsal muscle is involved in eyelid closure. It helps you close your eyes and it helps with the lacrimal pump, which helps drain your tears. It helps keep moving those lymphatics through. So any tears building up, any edema, any water retention, our pretarsal muscle functions like a pump and it helps clear all of that fluid out from your under eyes. So you can imagine if we block that pump, what would happen, right? So that's why conservative dosing is so, so important. You can see here, I found a variety of complications through, thankful to TikTok for sharing these, but you can see here when she expresses, she almost has worsening of bags here, right? This is after she received a jelly roll tox treatment. When she expresses, look at that bunching of the bag. It almost makes her bags look worse. For this patient, look at this fluid built up that she's experiencing. It's because, unfortunately, her pretarsal muscle was... Um, it, the, it was too high of a dose for her and it ended up blocking those lymphatics and blocking that pump and she had this built up of edema. Again, all of these things are temporary, but they're frustrating to our patient and they're frustrating to us. Then there's my patient. You can see here when she expresses, she has that bunching, that thickening. She has a built up of edema as well. And it's almost like the contraction of the muscle. It's creating a bag under her eye. It looks horrible, right? So these co three complications are normal. You can experience worsening puffiness. You can experience worsening edema. You can experience an almost pseudo ectropion effect to your under eyes. It can make your under eye almost droopy and it can worsen the appearance of that laxity and creeping. Now I will say it sounds so horrible to do, right? As an injector, why would we even perform this? This is probably one out of 30 treatments of jelly roll talks that I do. It's not common, but it can happen. So I do explain this to patients when I'm performing this treatment that these things can happen. They're not common, but they can. And unfortunately, there are some things that we can do to avoid this. For example, number one, we can have that reconstitution be really tight adding one cc of diluent to your neurotoxin vial so you can tighten up the reconstitution. Any patient with any red flags, like if they already have any edema or any puffiness or a history of uncontrolled allergies, that's a red flag that maybe we shouldn't perform this treatment. And we can keep that intradermal appearing injection. Remember, we're hitting those superficial fibers. You don't have to dive in deep. Keep the dose to 0.5 to 1% unit per pretarsal muscle and then allow that patient to prove that they can tolerate that. These little things can help avoid experience a complication, experiencing a complication, but sometimes these things happen and we know that as injectors, right? So unfortunately, discussing these things, telling our patients of the risks will help them make an educated decision for themselves, but it is a very beautiful treatment when performed properly. And I don't want patients to fear getting this done, but it is a risk that we take just like any other neurotoxin treatment that we're performing. So I hope this allows you to kind of wrap your head around why these complications can happen. Remember that pretarsal muscle is involved in eyelid closure and pumping that water or that fluid built up the tears everything through our system and if we block it block that function too hard we can experience these things but fortunately for us they are temporary it is unfortunately nothing that we can really do if we were to experience it it'll just have to take its course so i hope that was super helpful for you guys please hit that subscribe button if you want me to continue recording this was actually a request from a colleague for me to film this so if you guys have any requests on topics that you want to discuss again i'm an open book i'm happy to share my own complications and lessons and mistakes that i've done I think it helps just pour back into the industry. So thank you for tuning in.